Joining me now here on the MA report is the now LFA flyway champion after he needed 23 seconds to score a submission victory is Brandon Royville. Brandon, appreciate the time. I was actually just talking to your, your teammate there at factory X. Yusuf Zalal kind of about as it was obviously he had the, the highlight reel knockout. Then you had the highlight reel submission and, and, and he, he deferred to you. He says, he goes, man, he, he got, he got kudos from Eddie Bravo. So yeah, he, he gets the better finish of the night. That's so funny. I gave it to him too. Yeah. I gave it to Yusuf's on ESPN, man. Uh, Yusuf just, I think we all like in the back room, uh, what you didn't, what you guys don't know is that in the back room, he was working on that the whole time. He was throwing this kick. And then he faked the switch to the knee. Him and uh, Dustin Jacoby, they're working on it back. So uh, I think everybody in the back room saw that coming. And then the crowd was just like shocked. But we all we all knew it was going to come eventually. And goddamn, he timed it perfectly. He put on a show. And then on, on top of that, he kind of like shoved that kid's face. He was brutal, man. And Yusuf was a killer with it, man. Like, you can't knock it. And you know what's, uh, you know what's amazing? I think this is his first fight at 35. Um, and uh, you're going to be seeing that a lot from him. And now that he finally got a knockout, I'm sure he's gonna be addicted to that. He's not gonna shoot on any, but he's not gonna shoot in on anybody. I'm sure he's knocking everybody out in that division for sure. Before we actually talk about what happened in the 23 seconds, uh, you know, before the fight starts, they show the stare down between you and Nate. Uh, you know, a good stare down. Uh, what what was said in that? Um, absolutely nothing was said. We touched noses. It was awkward. I really didn't want to be a part of that whole entire thing, but uh, it was actually really well played by him. I ha- I have like my own little game plan when I uh uh when I do like my little weigh ins and stuff. I have my own little game plan of how stare downs go, and uh, he pretty much shut my shit down on that. He got the better of that one for sure. So uh, what I was gonna do is I'm longer than him. I was gonna put that like Nate Diaz Stockton stance on him and block him out of the picture. My fist right in front of his face and everything. That that show was gonna be all mine, and then he just walked right past my fist and got on my face. I was like, oh, well he ruined that for me. So uh. I don't know. It was well played by him. I thought it was a good idea. So beginning of the fight, uh, no wasting time. We get right into it. Um, was that planned or was that instincts? <laughs> no, off the, right off the I mean, it was planned, but uh, right off the bat, I knew he like, we, we watched a couple of, like I watched a couple of videos, me and my buddy, uh, Jake, I have, I have a best friend that's just an MMA fan and me and him just watch fights all day and just kind of assess what we should do. Mm-hmm. But uh, he helped, he helped, he's told me right off the bat, he's like, he's going to run in and try to, and like, he's going to run in and get you in that corner right off the bat. And I knew he was going to do that. And like, right off the bat, I was like, all right, I'm going to circle. I'm going to circle. So all week I was like, all right, I'm just going to circle if he does that. And then I'll just get my distance because uh, it's important for a guy like that to not, to have all my range. There's no point in being backed up in a corner and not being able to use my range when I'm so much bigger than him. And then, like, pretty much, like, I would like to say, like, an hour or two right before the fight, I'm fucking freaking out in the back room. I'm like, all right, if he runs up on me, I'm just running around. I'm meeting him right in the middle. And uh, he started running, and so I was like, like, once he started, like, getting a little bit of run start, I was like, all right, cool. And then I just ran up on him, too. So when it goes to the ground, um, I mentioned, I was talking to Yusuf, and and he was like, look, Brandon is so skilled on the ground. He's like, I I can't do what Brandon does. Talk to me about transitioning to finally get the arm bar where you wanted it um i was just gonna attack i it wasn't necessarily like i had it set up for the arm bar or anything i was just gonna attack whatever he gave me until i got something man i knew uh i knew what i did i knew what i did i, I knew it was good i was risking a lot of stuff because right off the bat i think i threw that knee and then i tried to take his head off with that kick which i knew if it, it was either gonna kill him or it was gonna put me on my back so i, I knew what i knew what what i did to put myself in that position i know that my coach would beat my ass if I risked position and didn't make the most of it. So uh, if I want to get my ass kicked when I got back to the gym, it was best tax submissions until I got one. So uh, it was exactly that, man. It, I, I I have like a that continuous like style of attacking in jujitsu. That's like my style is always submission before position. And uh, I kind of risked it all and it paid off, man. So it worked out. So what did Coach Montoya say to you after uh, after the twenty three seconds? He said, "Congratulations, son! You're a world fucking champion." <laughs> and I, I think it, it took me a minute to like, because like I said, for me it was just, I want to fight, man. Like no matter what, like I just forget about like I forget about the belt and stuff. And uh, sorry, my my manager told me to flex <laughs> on y'all. I should <laughs> I gotta have this around me. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, for me. It was just like I want to fight. I want to fight in my home, dude. I sold so much goddamn tickets. I sold like probably I had two hundred people in the crowd for sure at least. Not to mention my Factor X teammates, 
friends and family who are all just have to go for me out of solidarity. And then the people from Colorado, I'm, I'm like good with the whole community, man. Uh, the Colorado MMA community is pretty close. Like I said, I made friends with pretty much everybody. So uh, I know that he probably had like five people in that place going from the whole entire crowd is for me. So I kind of just forgot about it. And then coach came up to me and, and he's like, congratulations, son, you just became a world champion. You just changed your life. And I was like, fuck, man, that's a lot to take in right there, you know? It, it's when you sit there and say 200 tickets in my mind from the business side, I'm like, man, it's a good night for brand in and out of the cage. Oh, straight up, man. Like, I don't know. It was, it was cool. Cause it was like a, like a little bit of a get together and stuff. I don't know. I had people wait for me outside the arena. It took me like over an hour and a half to get out of there. So I got out probably at like midnight and I still had just like a huge crowd just waiting for me to walk out. It was cold. And it was a cold Denver night too, man. But, you know, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know how this sport is. It's, and I'm sure you've probably been asked a million times already. When's the next fight? Um, but is, is your, is your mindset of like, look, that's up for Jason house and, and the team at Iridium to, to work that out. What I can control is what I'm doing in the training room. Is, is it just more about my, my mindset now is let, let's, let's work on taking my game to another level. Yeah, so for me, uh, I'm all over the place with that, man. I always kind of like, fuck, I want to hold up a little bit and just see if any, anything falls apart or like I can get a short call up, someone gets hurt. There's a lot of flyweights, uh, a, lot, a lot of flyweight fat fights coming up, uh, including another one. I heard Ray Borg just got a fight announcement in mm-hmm. uh, New Mexico, which is yeah. another like, all right, if somebody gets hurt, which is like a messed up thing to wish for, but like if somebody gets hurt, I'll be right there, man. I'm ready for whatever. And then at the same time, I kind of want to just like, all right, well, if they're not going to call me, then if, if I didn't turn any heads, it's time to turn some more heads and just get another fight right off the bat. So I don't know. I'm a little all over the board when it comes to that. Uh, I, I went through a lot of big injuries for that fight camp, so it's really important for me and uh, important for my camp is just to, just to slow it down a little bit, dial it back. I need to do some rehab, and I need to recover a little bit. But at the same time, I'm ready for whatever. I've been dieting. I didn't eat uh, too much great. I didn't eat too much crazy stuff this weekend, so I'm ready for whatever. And like I said, I'm all over the board with it, so as you can tell. So, so how many uh, chocolates did you uh, grab from Yusuf on, on fight night? Oh, he, he only got like, so we had a big room back there. So I only got one out of it. But that is like something really, really courteous Yusuf does. And it's awesome when he fight in the same cars and he brings back a bunch of chocolate. And after, he, after we all fight, he breaks out the chocolate. Uh, and yeah, man, that was, a, that was a, always something awesome to look forward to. Do you, like, do you have a routine when the fight's over of like, okay, I've been dying in all the last six weeks, you know, and it's like, okay, I, I'm going to have a cheat meal. Is, is there a go-to cheat meal? Yeah, bro. I, I'll just show you. I go through, I go through this all day, every day. Uh, not when I, not when I'm dieting or whatever, but I just finished it. Uh, but Brookside, man, I need to get a sponsorship by him. I don't know <laughs> if you've ever tried this candy, man, but like, oh, this is like, I'm probably their main contributor right here. Brookside candy, oh, I, the pomegranate kind. I run through these, and that's mine. Yusef has that, like, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's it's amazing candy. It's a truffle. See, it see all the... I'm a Reese's peanut butter cup. Oh, I got one of those too, man. Oh, that's another <laughs> one. So honestly, like, I did really good uh, dieting for the most part, and then I go to my parents' house, visit my niece, and then eat all of her Halloween candy and. Then I'd do bad on my diet. So it was like a little bit of going back and forth of like me doing good stuff. And then I'll go see my parents go to go like see my niece and hang out with my niece or babysitter or whatever I need to do. And then next, you know, I'm raiding her candy drawer. <laughs> yeah. It's like when, when we, uh, Halloween time, when I go out and buy candy for the house, I only buy candy. I know me, and my wife will eat <laughs> because like where I live, I, I kind of live in this uh, a circular area where you, it's, you, you have to have a couple of reasons to come in and come out. And, and and we just never know how many trick or treaters you're going to have. So some years yeah. we have a lot of candy left over. So I got like I never make sure if we buy something we're gonna we gotta sit there and say we're gonna eventually eat it. Yeah, it's just that's weird. yeah, that is the way. So what are your favorite? What are your go tos? Reese's and what? Uh Butterfingers. Oh man, see those are all good choices. I think you could have said anything and I'd have been satisfied. But <laughs> Butterfingers is a good one too. <laughs> you kind of at that point, it's like man, all food sounds good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Exactly. Especially candy, man. All of it. I'm a big chocolate fiend. I think uh, out of like when I diet and stuff, the only thing I really miss is like chocolate and like, yeah, pretty much just chocolate. Everything I do. So like, like every time I ever cheat on a diet, it's this like, it's that Brookside candy or some kind of like dark chocolate. 
Okay. And I only do dark. I do dark chocolate because like I'll convince myself it's healthy for me. I'm like, oh, dark chocolate's good for CTE. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of people who can probably relate to that. Like, it, it finds uh, no. I, I really need that. I need that. Yeah, and then if all else, if all else, like fails, I'm like, oh, it's for mental health. <laughs> It, hey, look! Part of the sport is mental. There, there's no, there's no question about that. I mean, uh, but I mean, are you already back in the gym? No, not yet. I, I think today was the first practice because today's Monday. Today was like our first practice since, and uh, it was a snow day. Like, uh, I don't know. Here, I'll show you real quick. This is this is our Colorado view. I don't know if you can see any of that. Yeah, I can but, see that. Yeah, I don't have to worry about that here in Florida. Oh yeah. Yeah, bro. I can't even like walk out my door. There's three feet of snow as soon as I open my door. So I'd have to shovel my way out, honestly. And uh, there's no point in me doing that. I'm just going to sit and watch movies all day. <laughs> like we've actually like here, here I live in Tampa and I've been waking up. It's like in the 50s. So I mean, I actually can wear like, you know, somewhat cold weather gear. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's, I think it's supposed to like 80 tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> we, yeah. we, I, I, I saw someone had a meme the other day. It's like, you know, Florida weather, winter morning, Spring in midday, afternoon, summer. It's like we get all the the uh, categories of the year all at one time. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. I'm not I'm not a cold weather guy. So have you ever dealt with snow at all or no? Uh, I have traveling. Um, I will oh, tell you, okay. I remember being at man. This was man, this has probably been ten, twelve years ago when the Super Bowl was in Detroit. I was up there working, and. I'm in the the cab and it's snowing. I mean, just coming down. And this guy is just pedal to the metal. I'm sitting in the back seat going, oh God, oh God. But then I'm like, think about this. Like, this would be someone who doesn't live in Florida and comes in where it's a thunderstorm and they just see us going like 70. And they're like, (laughs) what are you doing? That's hilarious. Yeah. I, luckily I, I do, you know, because of the, my, you know, doing broadcasting work, I do get to see kind of the cold weather in other places. It's nice to have, but after like a day or so, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to go back yeah. to my weather. And that's, that's how I feel like it's, it's cool. Like I like driving. I'm like one of the few people I like driving in the snow. Cause you can just take your time. I like drifting a little bit. I don't mess mm-hmm. around that too much, but like, I just like, like listening to music and driving through the snow a little bit. But anytime I have to do anything else in the snow, it just sucks. Like if I have to go, like, I don't know wherever if i if i'm like forced to drive somewhere it's a pain in the ass or if i have to be somewhere at a certain time pain in the ass but all the other times man I, like i said i kind of like the snow i like the idea of having snow i guess is really what it is so if we, if if someone went through your phone your music selections is there anything that would surprise them um shit yeah probably actually yeah i have like a like a, a rendition of the grease song that i listen to i listen to a lot of like uh I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it surprised many people, but like I'm a I'm a metalhead. I'm a huge Metallica fan. Uh, I like uh, I like all that kind of stuff. But uh, for for me, I think like even today, I've just been listening to gangster rap. I live like a very like mundane suburban, very like uh, I don't know in a nice neighborhood. Just listen to gangster rap about selling drugs and shooting people and whatnot. Oh, yeah, no but, but, yeah I, I've got a wide range. I actually saw Metallica in San Francisco a couple years ago for an acoustic concert. And the funniest oh, really? part to me, and I, I used to work in, in, in rock radio and pop radio. And, and I would, I would always say, as you can tell, who's a talented musician, put them acoustic. That's who you find out who the great musicians are. And it was funny. It was this big, you know, day long festival. Everyone's acoustic. Metallica is playing some of their new music. And it was about a minute to the song. James goes, Oh, that's, that sucked guys. We got to start over. And they start <laughs> the song completely over, you know? And, and that's, that's the one thing is because you, you know, I love listening to acoustic. I, I, it's just kind of something I've always liked just because I think you kind of, you hear how good someone really is. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Uh, I have like that unplugged like Nirvana and, uh, uh, what is it? Chris Cornell, man. Oh, those are like my favorite. Oh, just, I, I, know, I just like downloaded that the other day. The Chris Cornell one or the Nirvana one? Nirvana one. Oh yeah. See, and like, I don't know. I, I like all that too. I think that's something that people would be surprised about me is I listen to like a lot of, I don't know, I guess like sad, uh, uh, what is that? What's what's Nirvana? Like grunge-ish type. Yeah. Music. Grunge. Yeah. It's like one of my favorites. Yeah. Even like before fights, I listen to like a little bit of like, I, I listened to a lot of Chris Cornell before this fight, honestly. But uh, I don't know, man. Like I said, I think that's something that would like surprise somebody. But I think you can hear like 
I don't know, and like unplugged and like are like in a acoustic type of like situation. You can hear a lot like you can just hear their like emotions in their voice mm-hmm. and stuff. And I like that. And like especially in those two artists themselves, like like uh, Kurt Cobain, man, you could hear the sadness in his voice, man. You could hear the sadness in Chris Cornell's voice. You can hear the emotions in uh, James Hetfield's voice and all that. Uh, like I mean, I was raised all about Metallica. I've been every Metallica concert in uh, in uh, my uh, that they've ever came to. Like as long as I was old enough to go, even my parents, my mom, uh, she had uh, when she was pregnant. She went to a Guns N' Roses and Metallica concert, and they still talk about that to the day to this day of uh, how Metallica blew uh, Axl Rose out of the water that night, and he was supposed oh, wow. to be the headliner. But it's like, how do you? How do you, as a sweet child of mine, follow up Master of Puppets? You know, like you can't follow that up. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't well, know. Is it, like I said, is it in Denver? What's it? Is it Red Rock Amphitheater? Red Rocks is like the big one. Yeah. I've heard like that's a really great place to see a show. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a cool place to be. I, I think I've, I've only been to like maybe three shows there, mm-hmm. but I go work out there. It's like maybe like five miles away from my house or something. So okay. I go work out there all the time and stuff and run. It's just a good place to get away, man. It's a pretty sight. Let alone that it's a concert venue and it's like a natural venue is really cool, man. So I don't know. Denver's awesome, man. Colorado's amazing. Yeah, I've been I've been to Denver a couple of times. Um I, I'll never forget when the first time I was going out there, a buddy goes, Hey, you, you gotta watch how many craft beers you drink, man. This high altitude will get to you real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget about that. I'm not much of a drinker, but like so I have to I can't handle my shit anyways. I only have a couple of beers at a time. But I can definitely go to like Florida and feel like a real man like an actual not flyweight man. <laughs> a normal adult size man i mean <laughs> yeah yeah and so but uh, we look forward to seeing wherever that next fight does take place of course congratulations on the victory and as always uh let everyone know when they follow you on social media and uh, anybody else you want to shout out okay um for me everything just be royval or brandon royval um i should pop up and all the stuff this is actually the second time i gotta do this because i'm like right next to like i'm in my room with all my stuff but yeah i get a shout out uh stash box this is a, a stash box vape pen i use it for cbd helped me a lot for this camp um and the, like new sponsors and they've been nothing but awesome i've been grateful to have them around and a uh, new company it's a hemp company and a cbd company um one's called cure native and one's called zensation um it's just a whole different kind of thing but they help us athletes a lot they gave me the cbd joints so this is an actual like marijuana or anything um i'm not a doper no i'm just kidding but uh they uh yeah so they sponsored me with like cbd and stuff and they gave me these cbd cbd joints to try out man grateful to have both them a part of the team man they've done a lot for me and uh shout out to factor x and team iridium man i couldn't do without those two man i love them to death 